Estimating parameters in a logistic regression model. There are many ways to do that, but we're going to focus on maximum entropy. Let's review. We're looking at data where we have observations with many features. We'd like to make decisions based on those features. And we'd like to increase the odds of predicting the correct class of an ob unlabeled observation. So from before the decision to after, we'd like a better odds of getting the answer right. We interpreted the W1, W2 using log odds ratios, but we can't really do that for data in general. We can do that, of course, if there's only one feature. We did it last time. Also notice that if there's only one feature, we'll probably just write x, not x1. And there's still more than one way, uh, even when there's one feature. And there are actually many ways to estimate these coefficients w sub j. We're going to focus on maximum entropy modeling. And in order to compare this later to what we've already looked at with the log odds ratios, we're only going to look at an example with one feature. Now, given a set of data, xi, y sub i, where y sub i is the class of the observation xi, and we're also given a model for the probability. In particular, the model for p comes from the log odds or logit function. We'd like to find for this model those parameters that maximizes the entropy subject to constraints. Now the constraints are going to come from the data because the data is what's known about the model. So we want to constrain the model using the data. And the concept we're going to use is that in order to maximize the entropy of the unknown, we'll want to minimize the entropy over what is known, in other words, the data. We can actually justify this rigorously. Uh, there'll be some notes on this. We, the rigorous justification does require that you know something about Lagrange multipliers, however. So if we have the information for an observation x corresponding to some model, then we can take the average information over the data based on the probability model and even if we don't justify it rigorously if you don't look at the Lagrange multipliers then it should be fairly obvious that we want to minimize the entropy over the data in order to maximize the entropy over that which the data does not explain. Now let's look at an example we're going to look at drug dosing. So if we have a drug, we want to give a dose that's effective, but we don't really want to give more than that. So let's suppose we have an experiment for a given drug. There are n test subjects, and the dose at level x sub i is given to a test subject, and x sub i here is the value of the feature x for the ith subject and the subject is class 1 if the drug was effective at that dose or class 0 uh, otherwise. What does the data imply is the best dose for the drug? Now we're going to look at some actual data and this is for the anesthetic propofol and we're looking at 50 subjects that are given doses x sub i milliliters per kilogram and we use a reflex uh, response to determine if it's class 1 or if there is reflex during sedation then it's class 0. Now we have two given doses of 14 milliliters per kilogram, two 15s and so on and we have 25 or so levels and not all the levels are equally spaced. The question is what dose for these lab rats has the best metrics, true positive rate, false positive rate, so on and so forth. Here's the actual data and notice that 
we have the levels 14 0 15 0 16 0 so that means that 14 15 and 16 milliliters per kilogram the propofol was not effective and we've got red dots on the x-axis corresponding to a value of zero if it was effective class one then we're plotting the dots with the dose level and the y-coordinate of one Now let's solve for P in our logit model. And P over 1 minus P will be e to the beta. And so the odds of Y being 1 is e to the beta. We've seen that already. And then we solve for P itself when we get the probability that Y is 1 is 1 over 1 plus e to the negative beta. Now if beta is constant, then e to the beta is just the odds of an observation being in class 1. But our goal is to look at a model where beta is w0 plus w1 times x. And we want to find the model that best fits the data. So is it this curve, or maybe this one, or perhaps it's that one? We're going to use maximum entropy modeling to figure out what is the best. Notice first that each positive observation has the probability 1 over 1 plus e to the negative w0 plus w1x and therefore the information is modeled for the positive observations as the negative log of that probability which simplifies to the log of 1 plus e to the negative w0 plus w1 times x. Each negative observation on the other hand has probability 1 minus p 1 minus that and we can find a common denominator and simplify and then we can multiply the top and the bottom by e to the w0 plus w1x and we get this simple form and so therefore the information of a negative observation as a function of x is the natural log of 1 plus e to the w0 plus w1x notice there's no negative in the exponent in this case so the entropy over the data and sometimes the entropy over the data is what's known as the dual objective is given there uh, the dual objective on X is given there the average of the doses where Y is equal to 1 that information and the average uh, plus the doses where uh, Y is equal to 0 that information and if we substitute our information models in we end up with this entropy for doses and notice here's our actual entropy and so 14 0 that corresponds to class 0 so we don't have the negative in the numerator in the exponent same with 15 36 however is in class 1 so therefore we get a different model for the information as you can see there so let's look at this in the IPython notebook first we're going to see that the logarithm we're going to call it ln PyLab calls it LOG. Here's our data, data we've already looked at in the notebook. This is a function that's going to define the style for the plots. So it's just a bunch of plot options that we'll apply each time we do a plot. So let's look at the plot of the data. And no surprise, that's sort of what it looked like. We've seen that before. So what we want to do now is we want to define the entropy as a function that for each choice of the w0, w1 gives us an entropy. Then we want to use the fmin function in scipy optimize and we're going to apply that to h. We're going to take an initial guess of 0, 0 corresponding to 50, 50 odds and that's going to give us coefficients w0 and w1 and I'm going to define those explicitly and there they are. So there's our w0 and w1 coefficients. Now I'm going to find the probability model as a function and then I'm going to plot and now we see there that blue curve is the actual model that we want to use as the best model, the maximum entropy model for the uh, dosing data. Now we can assess this model just like we've done in the past. We can use metrics. 
the predictions means we just will we'll apply the model to the actual data. But the predictions will all be in the interval 0, 1, not including 0 or 1. So the question is going to be, what is the best threshold for dividing between class 1 and class 0? Because we won't have actual zeros and 1s for the predictions. Now let's look at this question in a little more detail. If the predictions are either a 1 or a 0, then we can simply set the threshold as a half, and above a half would be class 1, and below a half would be class 0. So our threshold's a half. But if the predictions are in an interval, then it's rare that a threshold of 1 half would be what we use. Typically, we tend to use something else. And the something else we'll get from the receiver operating characteristic, in particular choosing the point that's closest to the ideal, 0, 1. So here is a receiver operating characteristic. Notice that a threshold of 0 would give us this far corner because that gives us the extremely positive. Threshold of 0 means everything is above 0, all the predictions are above 0, everything's classified as 1. Extremely negative is a threshold of 1. And we increase the threshold from 0 to 1, each yielding a different set of uh, values, true positives, false positives, true negatives, and, and uh, false negatives. And once we've done that, then we can choose the point closest to our ideal up there in the upper left corner, and that will be the best threshold, the one that corresponds to the ideal. So let's look at this in the IPython notebook. We're going to use our model to predict uh, the doses. Notice there are no zeros and ones, they're all between zero and one. But we can still use the receiver operating characteristic. We can still get an area under the curve. And we can still do the plot. There's our receiver operating characteristic. And notice we've got this green point that's the closest to the ideal 0 1 in the upper left corner and that corresponds to a parameter value of 0 0.61 and that 0 0.61 is our best threshold so we can redo our plot and notice that we'll get a horizontal line that separates our data and above that is classified as positive and below that is classified negative we can also find the x because we used a logit model, so the, the log odds is linear, so we can solve for the x, apply that formula, and we get 27. So everything above 27 will be classified as uh, positive. So again, a threshold of that 0.61288 implies a horizontal line on the dosing graph. And the x-coordinate for 0 0.61288, of course, it gives us a vertical separation. And notice that means that the, the true positives uh, are the ones that are both predicted positive and are actually positive. The true negatives are predicted negative and are actually negative. The predictions, however, come from the curve. So we have these negatives, or we have these positives that are predicted negative because their prediction coordinates are actually below that horizontal line. And so those are false negatives. They're predicted negative, but they're actually positive. And likewise, we have these false positives. So in summary, logistic regression is a linear classifier, a maximum entry model, a method for making better decisions, but remember we had to make a huge assumption. In particular we assumed that the logit was linear. And this is something we're going to have to work in the next few lectures. How do we cope with this big assumption?